genius. Pretty genius. <laughs> that, looks, that looks so janky. Oh well. Welcome back to my sunroom, the worst sound treated room of all time with all of its hard floors and windows, but the most beautiful room in my house that we continue to film in. Um, this is a one year long term review of this guy here, the A7 IV. I received it in the mail literally a year ago to this day um, after pre-ordering it. I know for the sake of like algorithms and stuff, I'm probably supposed to bury this at the end and kind of tease it. I'm not gonna do that. Up at the front, uh, I will just say, this camera is awesome. It's a great camera. For me as like a hybrid freelancer who does photo video work, it's just been a dream to work with. We're still gonna talk about specifics and we're gonna show some examples and like things that I really like. There's a few small gripes, but <laughs> I, I am just gonna put that out at the front so you can click off. If you're thinking about this camera, it's a great camera. Of course, the light just gets like so harsh as soon as I start filming. All right, so the first thing we're gonna get into is talking about the photography for this camera. We'll talk about video later as well. Um, and I do wanna emphasize, this is not a technical review, more so just kind of an user review. Again, sort of the backboard of this is always just how it functions in my freelance work. Uh, but I do want to kind of skim off the top a few specs that I just think are important to know. This thing packs a 33 megapixel back illuminated CMOS sensor. Um, it's the Sony next gen image processor. There are 15 stops of dynamic range and a five axis optical image stabilization. All of that is to say that, the, you know, the summary of that is that this thing is kind of the Cadillac of modern mirrorless cameras. So this has been my primary photo camera for the last year. Um, ever since retiring my Nikon Z6 II. And you can click up here to see why I have migrated over. And you know, across the gambit of different work for this thing, whether it's been weddings, corporate work, headshots, event coverage, uh, I don't think I have like found a single gripe. I don't think I've felt the ceiling of this camera. Its autofocus is sticky, it finds eyes, it locks eyes. Truthfully, it feels like it sometimes knows better than I do what to focus on. Like it seems to pick the right eyes out of the crowd. It's a little tricky to learn coming from Nikon, which is a more simple focus system. But once you kind of finesse it, build a few hotkeys um, or, or custom keys on the back that can move between the different modes, moving it from single point to wide, different zones, learning to get familiar with a little joystick and moving it around. Autofocus has been great for photos. The low light performance for this camera has been completely satisfactory, if not bordering exceptional. You can push this thing to 6400 ISO without blinking. You know, I don't sweat when I have to get up to that. I have pushed it higher and found that the images are still usable. And the 33 megapixel images that come out of this thing are a dream to work with. Lightroom handles them awesome. Because they're so big, again, coming from the 24 megapixel Z6 II, there's a ton of room for cropping, reframing, moving things around. Overall, just cannot say enough great things about this camera. And I, th I think my only gripe, if I can even call it that, and this might just be like some weird placebo mental thing, just from reading about Sony cameras for so long before moving to them, is I do feel a bit like the color science can be a bit muddy and I guess a bit uninspiring sometimes. Again, I know that color science is its own like deep rabbit hole in the photography sphere on YouTube and, and on forums, stuff like that. I don't know enough to say that for sure. I can tell you that there are definitely times I remember like shooting with my Nikon and being like, holy crap, like right out of the camera, this image looked amazing. I feel like I can still get incredible images off this thing. It just requires a bit more work in Lightroom. And and maybe I'm wrong here. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I picked up this thing recently, the Fuji X100V. I hope to make a review about it sometime in the future. And even with that camera, you know, Fuji has like legendary color science. The JPEGs that come out of that thing are awesome. But when I compare raw files from the Fuji to the Sony a7 IV, I don't know, like <laughs> they feel the same. You just work with them in Lightroom. It's just like you're a chef in the kitchen. You just gotta kind of cook a little harder, I guess. I don't know. So moving into video of the a7 IV, how that works for me. Again, just nothing but really good news for the most part. Um, I actually bought the a7 IV kind of as a B camera. I initially moved over to the a7S III. That's what you're looking at right now. And if you've ever worked corporate work, if you've ever done talking head B-roll kind of stuff, 
Um, having two angles for interviews is really nice. So having a B camera that was uh, more capable photographically than the A7S III, but could still function as a great B camera in video. This thing is the perfect camera for that. It matches the video to the A7S III perfectly. Like I genuinely can't tell sometimes uh, which camera's footage I'm looking at. It shoots 422 10-bit um, S-Log3 internally. It has S-Cinetone for kind of the more um, shoot and deliver footage. Uh, it just pairs. Like if you are a freelancer who is looking for a two-camera duo, these are your two cameras um, because they just work so well as, as a combo. Shoot in a sunroom, they said. No one said that. It was a dumb choice. If I scoop backwards. This... Okay, that's, we're, we're sitting down. How do we look? This, I, this has to be it. <laughs> we're not moving anymore. We're just going to finish it here. This has been a show. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, where were we? So when, I, when I'm traveling and I can only bring one camera on a gig or am choosing to bring one camera, I actually bring the a7 IV over the a7S III 90% of the time because, and follow me on this, the a7 IV does video better than the a7S III does photos. I love the photos of the a7S III, but they're 12 megapixels or whatever, they're tiny. And although they look good, you can't blow them up. There's not a lot of room for error in framing. Um, and so I actually choose the a7 IV a lot more than I choose the a7S III for hybrid projects. I guess my only beef with the a7 IV video is that it does have the 4K 60 frames per second crop, so you lose 30% of your frame in 4K 60, and it does not do 4K 120 internal. Eh, you know, like I find the further I get into sort of the freelance commercial filmmaking world, the more I'm moving away from the kind of like Peter McKinnon-y slow-mo that brought me into it, there's still a time and a place for it in your workflow. The right project does kind of call for it. You can usually work around it. I mean, you're cropping by 30%, get a wider lens or just shoot it a bit tighter. It pairs super well with the A7S III, as I've been saying. So, I mean, if you have the A7S III, you're handled. You can still do it with this camera. Not a deal breaker, but, you know, I'd be amiss not to mention it. And then lastly, the thing just to kind of wrap up on is ergonomics. It's a classic Sony mirrorless camera. If you've held any of the Alpha cameras, you, you'll kind of more or less know what this thing feels like. You know, for me, coming from the DSLR world, my kind of old Nikon brain is almost like it's too small. You know, like if, if you kind of see the way I have these like chonky meat mitts for hands. So when I grab it, like my pinky kind of dangles, it doesn't kind of give me the heft that I, I used to enjoy with DSLR cameras. This is a weird complaint because obviously like smaller is more impressive and, you know, for like packing it, it, it is nice to have such a small camera. There's a simple remedy to that as well. <clears throat> I just bought one of these little pinky plates from Amazon. It just goes right on the bottom like this. It screws into the tripod hole. It has its own separate tripod hole. So I mean, you're not even, you're not even losing a hole. Screw that guy in. And suddenly your pinky has a place to rest on it. For me, like shooting long wedding days, if you have a 70 to 200 or just like a giant 1.2 piece of glass on here, having like a little bit of uh, grip strength from your pinky it helps, so yeah, it's like a $30 fix for that problem. Not a deal breaker, something worth mentioning. So I, I think that's it. I mean, I know that the end of the video is where you're supposed to put the conclusion. I kind of put it up top. This camera's a dream, it's it's exceptional. Um, I think if you are looking for like a prosumer camera that does hybrid, that does like insanely good video, insanely good photos, that's your camera. Like it's my number one recommendation. I shot Nikon for like four years. I've seen and worked with the Canon R series. Like I'm not trying to be the Sony fanboy, but I, this camera is just exactly what you need it to be for hybrid um, freelancers or for hybrid creators. It's the real deal. That's that's it. That's the end of the review. Uh, that's all I got. If you enjoy this video, as always, uh, I, I hope you hit the subscribe button, uh, the like button, all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next one.